Max Kogler, the Academy Awards, it's this weekend, so let's talk movies and money. Your firm, Da Vinci, has a technology that helps people pick winners when it comes to movies. I guess it's money ball for movies. Tell me how it works. Greg, thanks very much for having me. Uh, this is actually a, a, a very interesting analogy. Money ball for movies is, uh, is how, you know, how I explain it to people when I meet them at the bar as to what we do. But what's actually very interesting is that we don't try to predict winners. Um, what's important for us is that we figured out that the movie industry as a whole is actually a profitable industry. We're not talking about major studios. We're also not talking about um, you know, very, very small movies that we wouldn't get our hands on. Independent produced movies uh, anywhere between, let's say, two to $40 million in budget. That piece, that universe of independent movies is actually a profitable industry. Since 1996, uh, if you had invested in every movie since, you would have made somewhere around 11.5%. So what we do is we say, okay, we want to get to that 11.5% beta of the market. Typically, beta is not very interesting for, for other industries, uh, but we want to get to that beta by being diversified enough. So we apply a venture capital portfolio theory to it, which is we, we're diversified enough, we go into about 20 movies a year, and then what we do once we've gotten to beta, we say, okay, let's now eliminate the ones that we think are for sure not going to make money. So you mentioned we, uh, we try to pick winners. That's actually not the case. We get to beta, and then we eliminate a disproportionate amount of losers because it's a lot easier to do. And how do you do this? Do you review the scripts? Do you measure the, the star's box office appeal? Because right now, in order to get theatrical release, you need a big star, and especially if you want to sell it abroad. Absolutely, we do all of the above and uh, a lot more. So we have uh, five different modules. One of them have to do. One of them has to do with the script and the story. One of them has to do with the talent, uh, whether it's directors, producers, or the actual actors. Uh, another one has to do with um, with demand that's already built in. So we we do a lot of different analysis that that feed into that. And you're right. Uh, for a movie to be really successful, it has to have everything aligned. That's also why it's so, it's so difficult to pick those winners. There are only a few winners. There are a lot, a lot of losers. And sometimes, even if you have the best cast and the best script and the best director, things still falls apart. Something just doesn't click. How do you account for this in your model? That's also a very good point. Uh, we expect to have a proportion of losers in our portfolio just that proportion to be significantly smaller than the market itself. Uh, so we can't always get it right, but the reality is the uh, industry as a whole is already profitable. If you're statistically diversified enough, you will be able to account for that. And how do you account for Netflix and Amazon changing the, tr the traditional model? Because right now all you hear about is Netflix and Amazon bidding up movies, outbidding the studios. So people aren't looking so much for box office grosses at theaters anymore, they're watching Amazon and Netflix. You're absolutely right. The, 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 the distribution model of, of film has changed dramatically in the last few years. Uh, it's not just Netflix and Amazon, but the mechanisms at which uh, f uh, people actually get to see films, like video on demand, any kind of streaming, iTunes and so forth, have uh, made it a lot more ubiquitous to be able to watch movies. So what you've actually seen, even though box office has stayed relatively flat in the U.S. since the last, for the last 10 years, has gone from 10 billion to maybe 11 and a half. Um, but the other channels of distribution have actually significantly outperformed. So, uh, you know, what used to be not possible is for someone to watch a movie on the subway. Now you can. You've downloaded it onto your iPhone. You can. You, ha you actually have people consuming more content. And that's not even talking about international. International box office has gone from 10 billion 10 years ago to about 24 billion now. China is going to outpace the U.S. in 2017, according to one study. All right. And then finally, can... Uh, da Vinci, tell me who's going to win on Sunday night, which is who's going to win the, the best picture? We can't. We are not in the business of predicting Oscars, uh, but we are in the business of evaluating people who have received Oscars. So it's a very interesting analysis that we did is for directors who have actually received Oscars, their trajectory of profitability tends to go down after the Oscars. All right. Directors who have come second, who have not won the Oscar, but have been nominated, their trajectory actually goes up.
Huh? On average. All right, so buy the nomination, sell the award. Thank you, Max Kogler. Exactly. Thank you very much, Greg. And thank you for watching The Street.